Breaking the crack. Sarah, are you there? Uh, yes, I'm here, out in the ether. Nice to see you, Russ. Nice to see you as well. You're back on. You're back in, uh, in your home, in your homeland. You're back home. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm back in the homeland, back in good old England. Good old England. You, your world travels are now. You're, you're off tour. You've, you've, you parked the bus. You're off tour now. Now you're just re rehabilitating after the long travel. Yes. Well, I'm off tour for this week. But anyway, Russ, it's your uh, birthday. I know, Another year I younger. Know. Happy birthday to you. I do find it uh, a, a nice a nice thing to do to record on my birthday as we're talking about aging <laughs> and longevity. And I'm staring at my I'm now in my 50s. And like, you know, it's a, it's a it's I'm 51 today and I feel I feel 51. <laughs> like I threw my I tried doing I was doing some hit exercises. I've been doing our our practice of longevity and i threw my back out like i don't throw my back out like that's what old people do but i did um because my core is soft not a core um my core is part of my whole body it's not really a core um but like i think that like lends into this whole thing around like we can try our best to practice what we're preaching here and learning but we also have aging bodies that don't want to play along nicely either. So that's what I'm finding as we're going through this process of anti-aging longevity. Well, you're wearing it well, Russ. And I think it's just, uh, <laughs> it's just the practice of it. It's the practice. Yes. And so Sarah, today, today we have another one of your wonderful friends on. Let's, let's jump into it. Yes. Hello, Chris. Thank you so much for joining us today. No worries. Thanks very much. Yeah. The much esteemed podcast. It's gone for that long. Um, yeah. I'm happy for the, <laughs> to share whatever I can with your viewers. Brilliant. And, and Chris is coming to us all the way from Australia today. And uh, today we're going to be talking about all things um, EMF, blue light toxicity, uh, all of those things that we can do that will definitely uh, help us at least um, stop us getting any older, if not start us going backwards. So uh, thank you, Chris. I know uh, that you've got a lot to talk about. Uh, maybe you can just give us a little bit of, of your background and how you got started in all this, because uh, I know it's very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Where do you start? Well, I, I started from a, a place of chronic illness. I had two autoimmune diseases. And the first one was when I was very young, when I was 18, I had Crohn's disease. And I had to have major surgery for that. I nearly died. And, um, yeah, I, I sort of went down the holistic rabbit hole to complement the, the mainstream medicine with that. Um, so that's that got me started. I don't know how long is that ago. It's like 25 years ago or even more. And, yeah, I decided after having working in a corporate environment that made me sick um, to plug out of that. And then I studied FDN, which was Functional Diagnostic Nutrition, which is a very well-known um, course in the states that, and also work with a clinical nutritionist. So that got me looking at uh, lab testing to look at underlying causes, which mainstream stuff never looks at, and your blood tests never really get to. And then it was interesting. I was coaching that, doing that for three or four years, and then I went to Melbourne, and I was there for a ten day holiday, and I couldn't sleep, and I couldn't walk, and all my symptoms flared up. I thought, what's going on here? And just like synchronous serendipitously a friend of mine had given me um Cyril Burke's number um and Cyril is another friend of ours who's a much esteemed EMF expert and I thought I've got to ring him up and ask him what's going on with this house I'm in and he said that's got dirty electricity and EMFs everywhere check the map where the towers are and and basically I was in a massive flare-up because I was in the middle of a an EMF hot zone you know I think um, 5G was just starting to be rolled out, small cells, et cetera. And I thought, wow, that's crazy. And I had come in, come into the light aspect before that, but this just added an understanding. And I, I then worked with Cyril. We did talks everywhere and understood like EMF is just a spectrum. It's, you know, it's harnessed from the natural environment. Um, there's natural parts of it. There's man-made parts of it. You know, light's a natural part of it that we need to tap into, and that the man-made stuff is what we need to mitigate. So, 
that started me on that journey with the EMF. The light journey came through Dr. Jack Cruz, um, and I was just transfixed with the way he explained it from a quantum level. And but his his hacks were so simple. He's like, just get out and watch the sunrise, and then block blue light at night. Oh, I can do that. And I actually tested it on myself because when I was working a corporate career, I um, I lost my eyesight very quickly in a unnaturally lit environment with fluorescent tubes and LED lit um, screens I was working on. And I thought, oh, I'm going to test it. So I, I watched the sunrise for six weeks, used um, yeah, orange blocking glasses like Sarah's got. And within that time, my eyes just regenerated and I didn't need the glasses anymore. So it was my first hack into rever- reversing stuff that go, oh, you can't reverse that. <laughs> So that was that. That's that's a bit in reverse. It was a light first, then it was an EMF. But that's the long story short of it. Yeah, that's cool. That is amazing that you've done your own testing. Uh, sorry, Russ. I'm just going to back. I was just going to say maybe you can go back and tell people because you know you were saying you're in a toxic house because of all the dirty electricity. What does that actually mean? Dirty electricity. Yeah, I should be careful with the terminology. There's different types of EMFs in the house. Like we've got, you know, the AC power grid that. Tesla gave us or whoever took those patents and made that and and when you sort of um, use things like you know plug things in to the power sockets and inverters for solar it chops the power up it makes it very incoherent and that actually magnifies um, how aggressive that electrical field coming from your wiring is most people don't realize is the wiring in the back of the wall emits a omnidirectional field three meters out and then you've got all this layered in um, frequency that's actually aggressively affecting the nervous system and affecting with our um, bioelectrical rhythms i mean we are we're a bag of salt water that's conductive um what do you think happens when you put yourself in the middle of electrical field <laughs> <laughs> can you know like my friends when like Cyril says you know electricity comes before chemistry um and Dr Beck is a big one that I follow too so yeah you these subtle energies when you realize oh I woke up and my head's like you know it, it's all muffled or you know I, I, I'm hazy and I can't think straight well you haven't detoxed because you've been in an electrical field and you haven't in talk about anti-aging you, yeah sleep is important yeah. And, and that's, that's a really great point um, about, I mean, and, and I think there's a lot of things we've, we've learned about and things I've learned about and, and, and heard about, but actually physically going through it and physically feeling it. Um, you know, there are a lot of times where you go to the doctors and they're like, we have no idea what you're going through. This is a really interesting thing and it's hard to diagnose it. Um, and it may just be that, right. It may just be the fact that you're living in an, in an unhealthy environment because of, um, because of the EMX, the EMF toxicity. I, I'm curious, um, when you talk about living in kind of that zone, like, like, what does that mean? And, and can, can people identify if they're in one of those zones or if their, you know, electronics are creating, uh, more toxicity than just the phone, the TV, your computers, laptops being on your, truly on your lap, like, are there are there things that you can identify that you're in these weird zones of kind of being in between uh, you know, boxes outside or something? Yeah, I mean, it would all come down to your symptoms. Generally, a lot of the common symptoms people are express are just so common they don't put it down to anything. But that's just the way I feel, like headaches or fatigue, or again, like not not sleeping, not getting deep sleep, or waking up fuzzy headed, and those types of things. So the, the symptoms are very generic and we're trying to train doctors to understand that when people come in with generic symptoms that you have you have to look at this as a as a profile of exposure um and with the emf it's cumulative so you know what people don't realize if you want to go down the emf rabbit hole is the regulatory bodies state and the legals in your phone state you know you've got to keep it away from your body and really i think six minutes is the maximum exposure for phones a day um, and 30 minutes cumulatively in frequencies from, you know, low to high frequency. This is what the international bodies and the regulatory bodies have known and state since like the nineties. 
And that was because they tested 2G phones. The phones we used then were just for talk and text. There was never this huge amount of data that's getting pumped across the airwaves that we need to run apps and social media and all the stuff that we now run through our phones. So we're exceeding all the actual standards every day, like layer upon layer upon layer. So that's what, you know, plug for the course. I'm building that course EMF Made Simple with the doctor so the public can learn this is what the, the health and safety elements are and this is what you practically do to reduce that exposure um, and make sure you're aware of that. Now, don't, don't be scared of using technology, but know that there's actually a limit. Um, and again, I'll quote from Cyril. When we do our talks, he usually says, look, you can drink gin every day, but maybe you want to have a day off. Because it's like you need to detox. <laughs> it's the same thing. It's exactly the same thing. Yep. Yes, detox from our fat. Well, that doesn't happen, though, does it? I mean, ha- it it very rarely happens that you have a day with absolutely zero technology. I mean, no, exactly. I do try and do it like on a holiday, but like on a day to day basis, it's just not happening. And when you're saying that they're looking at the safety standards for 2G and now we've got all of these, a lot more coming through, do they not update the safety standards then? No, they haven't been updated in 30 years. So I think there's a recent court case in America, the FCC were um, commissioned to do more safety standards. There's all legal. There's also uh, plenty of legal um, cases that have come out both here in Australia and also in the UK with, Children um, and people who have electrosensitive um, diagnosis, because you can be diagnosed officially with electrosensitivity, electro hypersensitivity, and actually courts and magistrates ruling in their favour to make sure that like their work zones and their like schools are actually um, mitigated and hardwired or whatever. So uh, it's actually it's a bit like Monsanto all these court cases. It's like cigarettes, mate. It's like It'll all come out that way, this exact same way. But sort of getting back to the anti-aging thing, really aging is an aspect of like poor redox production and poor cell turnover where, you know, you're not repairing as quickly as you're damaging. And and sleep repair, this, the process of that is the sleep process is the one, like the, the um, autophagy and apoptosis during sleep or apoptosis program cell death is is the programs you run at night when you're sleeping and you need adequate melatonin levels to actually for that to kick in and you detox properly and that so that if we take anything away from all this jargon I'm you know spewing out is that you know your melatonin levels are critical and EMF and your lighting is degrading your melatonin before you go to bed and you need light, you need natural light in the morning to build melatonin. You know, a lot of people are banging back supplements, but that's that's not a long term. Yes, no, we that is something that we have from from really from season one. We've been banging on about seeing the sunrise and how that sets you up for the whole day and how that helps with your hormone production. So I think that message, at least we, we're trying to get across and we've probably said it in many different ways. But from the point of view of technology. Okay, now we understand there are a lot of risks, but what would you say to do? Russ and I are kind of on this anti-aging. We're we're on a bit of a mission. We've got we've taken all of our metrics, and we need to we need to reduce our age by the end of the season. The challenge is on. What what can we do? I mean, actually, I've started doing things. I mean, I didn't know about the three feet away from the bed, but I sleep at the other end of the bed now, the feet end. Like I put my head at the feet end. Just because I'm thinking, well, if there is all this stuff coming at me, surely the middle of the room is the best place for my brain. But but what else can we do? I mean, you talked then about hardwiring schools and things. Do you do you recommend, you know, going as far far as hardwiring? I mean, that's that can be like the Wi-Fi into the house, or that can be like stage two. I mean, stage one is like turning Wi-Fi off at night, and turning all the phones and electronics off. You know, not having them in the bedroom, or at least having them on flight mode. A lot of people don't understand their alarm will still work if the phone's on flight mode. You know, people don't know. I've got to have my phone on the network because my alarm, uh, it works without it, mate. You know, turn everything off from the phone, you know, so you don't have any incoherent uh, frequencies. The main, like, Wi-Fi is a real concern to me because Wi-Fi 
I follow a professor in Australia called Professor Trevor Marshall who's done studies in mice that showed that Wi-Fi or two and a half to six gigahertz affects the vitamin D receptors. So the vitamin D receptors resonate at a certain frequency and then this pulsed microwave radiation sort of affects that and then the molecule can't attach to the receptor. So vitamin D deficiency, just like I don't yeah, want to bring up. So this is vitamin D deficiency. Yeah, so I don't want to bring up the elephant in the room, but during lockdown, you know, they had us in our houses with Wi-Fi pumping out and everyone's on their iPads. And they want, like, for example, in Australia, like the Curtin Uni in Western Australia has done studies into vitamin D deficiency and pretty much half of everyone down south is deficient all the time in Australia. Yeah, which is amazing in Australia because you do actually have a decent amount of sun. I mean, that should be one of the places where you should at least have high vitamin D. But, every, but the actual message coming from the government has done for 30, 40 years. And I, I'm not from Australia. I'm from UK originally. And when I came here, they had this advertising campaign called Slip, Slop, Slap, which was, you know, slip on a shirt, slap on sunscreen, slap on a hat, whatever. I've missed that out. But now they've ramped that up where you see ads like don't let the sun affect your DNA, da, 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 like, you know, make sure you get your sunglasses on and everything's slapped up when you go outside all the time. Well, we know, of course, if you haven't got sunscreen on, it's blocking UVB light. Um, everyone's covered up. And then Australia's own Can- Cancer Council in their, in their website says, you know, outdoor workers have less incidence of melanoma than indoor workers. And, that's also an artificial blue light sets people up. What people don't realise is when you're indoors under this really bad spectrum of artificial light, it's so narrow in the blue and you've got receptors everywhere on your skin, in your eyes for blue light, and it's just moving your chemistry in a, such an alien way. You know, um, So that's why I actually got into the lighting and developing lighting so we could fit out indoors spaces uh, with more c- congruent, you know, full spectrum signals, you know. So I've fitted out lighting in people's home offices and they go, oh, my, my headaches have just disappeared. I say, well, you're not getting the blue light and in this thing's not flickering, you know, at 60 hertz and, and wrecking your, you know, through your eyes and your brain. So those things, so it's sort of long, long story around, but definitely just start with switching your phone off and Wi-Fi if you haven't already. And then potentially, if you you know, like us, we're on computers all day. My station's set up outside, and I'm hardwired out, so I'm getting near infrared light or natural light, augmenting any blue out of here, and I'm not getting any EMF apart from a little bit of electric field coming from the computer. I mean, does it help, Chris, to have the windows open if you're working inside? Like, I, I mean. I, I, I work. I work in my my home office is like in the corner of a room. I get sun from both windows. I get a lot of natural light. I don't have any other light on except that my router is sitting right by my computer. Um, but if I have the windows open, does that help? Am I what windows are going to nope. help? So everything has to be hardwired. You should be hardwiring. Really, that that pulse okay. EMF is that's dehydrating your cells. So when you talk about anti aging, that's aging you completely the other way. You know, cells are getting dehydrated, redox capacity in cells is reducing, and then you've just got to recover. So you're setting yourself back where you want to give yourself every advantage if you're on this challenge to get younger. Yeah. But yeah, cracking the window open, just the quantum aspect of light, even just cracked open a little bit, getting some light in, you know, is is more often than not. You know, light windows will filter out the UVB. You have to have them on. So what you're saying is he needs to move the move the router and then put an Ethernet in, like just totally move the router out of the room. Well, if you've got, sorry, if you've got, if you're going to cable it up, you don't need to move it. So you turn the Wi-Fi off or log into the log into the modem and turn oh, the I Wi-Fi see. off. This is another. I, mean, I, I have a hardwire coming in from. I have a hardwire coming in from my box upstairs, and that is uh, connected to. A router. So all I have to do is just hardwire into that and just plug it into my into hardwire into that. Make sure you switch off right. the Wi-Fi. I mean, you don't know how many houses I've gone to and people go, "I'm hardwired." Well, the Wi-Fi is still turned on on the router. So remember to turn the Wi-Fi <laughs> off yeah. on the router and turn the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth off on the computer that's trying to connect with it, and you'll feel a big difference. I, 
Yeah. I, I mean, I think that um, the Wi-Fi is something that is, is I, I, I've heard stories too. And I think we've talked about it here around like, you know, if you are going to run Wi-Fi, can you put something around your router? Is there anything you can do to kind of help prevent that? Because not a lot of people, you know, live in an apartment building. You've got to run off Wi-Fi, right? Like not everyone has the luxury of being able to hardwire in. Well, flip. Yeah, I wouldn't be getting into some tinfoil hat stuff. No, I shouldn't say that. I'm a tinfoil hat wearer. Um, <laughs> yeah, usually what you do, right? You most, of the, most of the routers um, out of the box are set up to run a two and a half frequent, uh, two and a half gigahertz and a five gigahertz frequency. It's running two bands and one's a very strong band and one's a weaker band. You log in and you um, disconnect the five gigahertz band. You don't need it unless you're in a concrete building. It's a, it's a stronger signal pumping out to get through walls. So if you get, you bring it back down and you have two and a half only, that's, that's, a, that's a good start. Having two two bands, that's another thing. People go, oh, I've got 5G everywhere. No, no, it's your 5 gigahertz. You're picking up, it's 5 gigahertz from a router. That's what the phone picks up. Oh, 5G's on my phone. No, 5G's got nothing to do with the 5 gigahertz signal coming to your phone from your router. So you can, in America, I think you guys, I don't know if you guys create, have routers that you can just like on off switch. Um, I think you have to like log into them to disconnect it. And also in Australia, some of the routers are getting real tricky um, out here. What they want is if the power goes out, they have a chip in them. So they have a little mobile chip that connects to the tower. So it runs 24 seven. So you actually have internet access in your house. So I get people to check if they have those ones with a chip in it and I get them to pull it out or, We'll get one you can just turn on and off. And that comes from all of us. I live in the mountains and we've had pretty bad storms here in California. And, uh, you know, our Wi-Fi goes out for days, right? And we call up and like, why can't you keep our, us connected? And that just comes from all of us needing to be connected 24-7. Um, I, I think there's more to it than than turning things off and, you know, helping helping reduce the going cold turkey and turning things off completely and not being connected is the harder part. We have this obsession with a need to be connected to, uh, you know, the internet constantly and needing to have a connection so I can check my scores or check my social media. That's the harder part, right? Of being able to turn that off. Like when, you know, the fear that people have when you say, I'm going to go into airplane mode at night and turn the Wi-Fi off. Well, then what happens if someone calls me with an emergency overnight or like, I think that people are just so used to being connected. You got to remind them what they did when they were a kid. Remember when you were a kid? I couldn't even remember my home yeah. phone number yes. when I was a kid. Yeah. I couldn't even I couldn't remember to call home. I didn't even know what the number was. No, we was. didn't. Yeah. You know, so I, I'm an 80s child, so yeah. that was a great uh, time to, to grow Same. up. But I, I'm with you. Like in our, in our EMF Made Simple course, we've got a big unit on like the dopamine hack. So the apps, you know, they're just hacking dopamine all the time. You know, on, off, on, off, you know, reward cycle. And that's hard when you get into that zone like even me if a phone goes missing i'm like wow where's the phone <laughs> go into like a stress response um, yeah yeah you know so it's but it's it. work isn't it it's work has come you, everybody's work is now totally related to this you know i mean i was i was also an 80s child and a 90s worker and you went to work you did your work you came home and you were off it's not like that anymore because there's stuff to do you know I was recently in China and internet was tricky there and it was difficult and then I would get onto some VPN somewhere and all of the work would come in and I'd have to quickly try and get stuff done before I lost it again because that that is the reality right now most people's work is totally dependent on email and yeah of course and then in our course we have like 10 steps and we say look choose two or three, you know, that you're most comfortable with to start. And then when you get more advanced, like one of those steps will be a digital detox day, like off for a whole 24 hours. Yes. a digi Yeah, no, I mean, that is very, that is very doable on a Sunday or something to do a digital detox day. And, and maybe we need to start bringing it in, Russ, if we're going to kind of get our numbers down. But let's... Yeah. Uh, it's Chris, like, maybe well, let's it's like fasting, Sarah. Like you know, like it if we like fast fasting, on right? we fast yeah. on Mondays, we digital detox. Uh, yes. Well, I, I have work to do too, but we'll digital detox. <laughs> we can't do Wednesdays because we, you know. So what? 
we'll we'll find our day of digital detox. I mean, maybe it's Sunday, right? Maybe on Sundays we we do. I think it. Sunday is the best day because yeah. then you know you know you haven't got the work stress. But also, so from the point of view of we know what we're doing, we're aging now. You just said we're dehydrating ourselves, you know, and then we're also hitting ourselves with this dopamine all the time. We're probably depleting that. What can we really do practically, Chris, in a short time frame? Like we've got six months. I mean, yeah, we can unplug the Wi-Fi. We can we can have our digital detox day. What else can we do? I mean, I know you talk about blue blocking glasses, and I have started wearing these, although they're not your ones, so they're probably very bad quality. They're actually some that were given to me at a biohacking event. But maybe you can just explain to people what's going on with with that because that's another piece where it kind of you. I don't wear them all the time because I feel a bit of a spanner wearing them, to be honest. But I'm doing it for this six months because, like you, I kind of want to see what happens. But do you need a certain ones? And when do you need to wear them? And maybe give us a bit of a lowdown on that. Yeah, I mean, the the blue blocking glasses, you know, was a hack for me and it works so well. So I did get into it. I work with a company, like you guys know, and they've developed different types of glasses, different types of lighting. But what's happening today, if people do get interested in blue blocking, they do a Google search, they might go to an optometrist or just find something that comes up and they'll they'll get like just a clear glasses like that and they'll say they're blue blocking glasses. Well, they're not. They're, they, they've got a, a film on them that filters blue light, whereas you need the orange or red tints to block blue light. So what I when I educate people, I say, look, okay, if you're working on a computer during the day, where the, where the filtering glasses that brings down that big blue light spike so you're not getting affected by your eyes aren't getting that big over emphasis on the blue. And then at night you just switch to these ones, you know, a couple hours before, you, before bedtime, you know, when you're watching a movie or something. I'm not like total net phobic or, you know, you can't, you've got to change your whole lifestyle. Um, just start to in, in, in incorporate things that will help and then you do your detox as you change your behavior. So... But so yeah, definitely people got to understand that you need red and orange at night to block 100% of that blue light because the blue light is crazy. It you know 80% of melatonin starts well, you can get up to 80% degradation of the melatonin that may be in your system just by blue light on the eyes and skin when the sun goes down. And you might have seen Sarah like you can search PubMed and it shows like this glucose metabolism effects by blue light alone irrespective of food so you don't want high cortisol high glucose at night like your whole chemistry has shifted into you know still thinks it's 4 p.m at like 10 you're never going to get to REM sleep and I always say you know are you dreaming no but I sleep but are you dreaming are you in REM sleep you know obviously you guys are measuring metrics so doing hacks is having measuring tools that you have make sure one they're turned off you have measurement tools that aren't connected to Bluetooth and rubbish like that, and can be then connected when you need to download the data. Yeah. So that so there's a few yeah, new. It does go this against is, the aura. We, we wear right. aura rings right yeah. now. Yeah. But this These is connected Bluetooth. to Bluetooth. It is. Yeah. But I figure it's not near my head so it, much, and it's small. You don't need it, the Bluetooth on to collect the data. You don't uh, need, not to collect no? the data, or no, just, just but just to pass upload. the data. Exactly. You don't need it. So when it's yeah, on, it up, you have to just turn on to upload it. Yeah. You don't need that. You don't need this. Is like the craziness of this. These metric, these Fitbits and stuff. Like what? It's counterintuitive to have them on at night tracking sleep when you you're having a, a frequency that is affected. So just to get make it easy to understand, your body, as I said, is yeah, conductive, electrical, and EMFs, man-made and natural, are light. And that interrupts, that light has to be in certain times during the day. You're just getting light in a different way. And, your bo- you know, your brain picks it up, your eyes can't pick it up, but your body's getting affected by a light signal when you're sleeping. And that's not how we're made. The sun goes down, there's no light. It's darkness. Melatonin kicks in. All these programs kick in. And one thing that is absolutely epidemic these days, which is Alzheimer's and neurodegenerative illness, which I know you're, you know, very big on with the red light therapy, is the effect that melatonin has where the brain detoxes, reduces in size, does a metabolic flush at night to detox the brain, and that's wholly and solely reliant on your melatonin levels. 
Yeah, that yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, they're actually doing some very strange studies using red light at night to promote that flushing, that kind of glymphatic drainage, which I'm not so sure about because you know the brain wouldn't normally be exposed to any kind of light at night, and it's not in the eyes. They just put the light like on the on the head. But even so, it's a kind of strange therapy. But they are showing that that is having that effect on this brain flushing overnight. If you use a device overnight, obviously we do want to make sure you can do that. Like that's what I'm saying. If you do all the follow-ups to that, then that happens more naturally. And I'm, I'm not against. Like I'm very big for the for the red NIR for the neurodegeneration. There's been two university studies, human studies, double-blind, placebo-controlled, done in Australia on those helmets. So it's a very big, very big part of neurodegeneration as a treatment. Yeah, Australia is leading the way for sure and all of that study. So you're saying for all of these devices, the Bluetooth has to be t- off on the phone and everywhere and then you just put it on just to read. Check the manual, but that's how it should work. That's, that's all these like biofeedback like Healy and stuff like that. People are running programs on their phones and the phone scans you and da 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 I'm like, it doesn't, it's, it's like, it's incoherent. It's incongruent with what you're trying to do. There's two opposing frequencies here. Yeah, on my device that I've developed, it's got like a little switch on top, which switches off all Bluetooth. You just turn it and then that's it. There's no Bluetooth going to your head because you can you can set the app so that you can have a program that you start on an app and it sends the message by Bluetooth. But then you you can have like it's a kill switch that totally switches off any Bluetooth going to the head. And the same with, you know, those earbuds that people wear, you know, that's Bluetooth. So that's a definite no, no. All these companies like red light, red light therapy companies, check in with them. You know, we do red light panels, but they're, they're low EMF. There's no Wi-Fi. A lot of these modern companies, it's it's a modern phenomenon. You know, everyone wants an app for it. You know, so even within the health space, you've got to double check and make sure you know you're, you're getting something that's that's um, works in that that way or doesn't work in that way. Doesn't have all this stuff connected to it to connect them. Yeah, exactly. So you don't want any, yeah, we want anything. I've got my thesis. We had Defender Shield on last, was it last year, Ross? We had Defender yeah. Shield on. So I've still got my um, Defender Shield headphones. That have, this is just like a, an empty tube. I wear, I wear the same one. Russ, I, wear the same I don't one. know what that yeah. is. You've got. <laughs> you do. Good. So if you've got. I, I don't have, I, at least I'm connected. I've, I got rid of my Bluetooth. They're, they're here, but I don't, I just. I, you know, these, I, I would wear these six to eight hours a day, Bluetooth headphones. Wow. I stopped wearing them. Wow. I stopped wearing them because yeah. of it. Another thing in, a, in Australia, you wouldn't realize, um, we've got a really prominent brain surgeon down here that's retired, right? He's trying to bring more emphasis to the EMF factor with brain cancer. And in Australia, I've had a couple of friends die of brain tumors in Australia recently. And before my friend died, she said he wouldn't believe the cross demographic of people in these wards with these tumors from young to middle-aged to old, you wouldn't believe it unless you saw it on the news. um, This is like, I don't know. It's the elephant in the room. We're trying to bring more attention to it. Don't overwhelm people. That's why we built a course where people can actually take their time, you know, to actually understand what's going on with what they use. The, these guys who build the things tell you in the legal section, the legal section tells you they've, they've covered their asses, you know, but they don't tell you at the phone shop. Well, I mean, yes. that's, you know, there, there's, there's an entire, uh, you know, um, the, the, the prequel to Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul, in that show, his brother uh, is, you know, he has completely created – uh, this phobia of EMFs and he's wrapped himself in metallic blankets and turns all the lights off. He can't go to work anymore. And I can see this becoming something that you become so obsessive about um, of something you can't see, right? Something you're not, in, you're not, you know, something about eating it and drinking is if I drink alcohol, I know that's bad for me. So I can stop drinking alcohol and I can not feel the effects. I can stop eating something bad for me like sugar and I can, and turn my body off from not being so attracted to sugar. This is invisible and you can't see it and you have no idea how much is coming in and how much is being processed. And you, I think understanding where it's coming from is great, but it can lead to mass paranoia. And I can see 
this being something I can become very paranoid about in my house of like, I'm putting boxes around our phones and we're going to get rid of our, I mean, and you know, you're, you're taking away something from children too, which is like, I got to be connected all the time. And I want to, I want to watch YouTube and like, you know, so there's, there's probably a good way to start. So it's not a full cold Turkey thing. And then ease your way into it. So you're starting with a detox Sunday or turning things off after six o'clock at night or things like that, that, start the process in the house right. because we're we've created addictions to this emf you now. can't say take it it's not about taking it away anyway because you just can't do that you never do that you don't do that with any drug you don't do that with food you don't do it with anything you try to do it's just understanding that if you're talking about anti-aging and talking about why we we need to create like sleep habits that get us better recovery and that's what these are just you know one of the many things you can do um, pro- for me, they're more prominent. Like light and EMF at night is is very prominent. Because obviously, I've had two autoimmune conditions. Anyone who's sick, who's had the sickness, you actually become more sensitive to this stuff. So the the doctor that I'm working with, who's doing the course, within that course, there's a whole module on EMF and pathogens. And what people don't realize is, for example, you can go to PubMed and you'll find that the 50 hertz or 60 hertz that you guys have in the back of the wall can reactivate Epstein Barr. It can react at mold and EMF. Look at Klinghart's work. All these frequencies affect biology. So if you've got an infection or, you know, chronic fatigue or any underlying thing that you're trying to deal with, it's a major part of that puzzle. So probably speaking to more of those people who have chronic illness, um, but you don't want to become ill because you've worn earbuds for like five years and then you get a set a rogue cell issue or something like that because it's it's only you know what I like you know Russ I only I love the parent when you do bring up the paranoia situation because it can feel a bit tinfoil hat esque but look at like all of the industries like from you know tobacco to fibro cement asbestos chemicals like RFK Junior exposing that in the court it's all the same stuff Dupont with the Teflon I mean what I missed I had a joke with one of my American health coach colleagues. He's like, he had, he had on his Facebook, he had a picture of the 70s when everyone was like slim at the beach and then now and everyone's overweight. What's the difference? You're still eating sloppy joes and bloody um, peanut butter and jelly back in the 70s, weren't you? There's not much change, but the other industrial chemical food complex EMF and all the other crap they laid on us just changed their ability to our whole metabolisms. You know, so what what I'm trying to get and, and, I'm trying to get the other, the other thing there too, Mr. Chris, is that like, Mr. T said, yeah, I mean, you know, Mr. T, remember Mr. T growing up? Of the course. A-team. Yeah. He said, what's the main thing? Chemicals. Yeah. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Chemicals. <laughs> I used to have a pole doll. <laughs> just pull the back of it and just, yeah. yeah. It wasn't yeah, Wi-Fi I mean, like, also it wasn't created, Wi-Fi like the doll uh, today. It was pulled off. Sorry, mate. I'm 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 losing my phone. Yeah, we're all yeah, we're all in that age category where like we, we created all of these things for our convenience, but what we've done is created uh something where we never have to leave. We never have to like move uh to go from here to there because it's all right here in my hand and I can I can do it all from my phone and it's great for convenience, but it's created lethargy. It's created obesity. It's created this, this, this thing where we don't have to move because we keep getting hit with the same drug over and over again. And I I do, I do love this idea of turning things off, like especially at night. And I think this is something that Sarah has been uh, pounding away at too. Of That's when we are rehabilitating at night is when you do flush, your brain is flushing. So, why bombard your brain at night when you're trying to heal? Uh, you're continuing to get EMF into your brain while your brain is trying to heal. And that's the time when you should turn things off. And you don't need things on. Exactly. Like sir, the, our EMF um, counterpart and friend who's the expert, when he consults here now, and um, he does consults around the world, but um, he's very much just saying, hey, just deal with your sleeping space. If you can heal and recover and detox, you have much more of an ability to deal with any of these frequencies in the daytime. That's that's his go-to. He's like, deal with your sleeping space. And that's where that's where the magic happens. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Right there. 
That makes a lot of sense. And I think, I was going to say, it's a bit of a pessimistic message, but I do think probably we're just in a short time where the health the health implications haven't yet been discovered and new things are going to happen and we're kind of getting used to technology. So I think we've just got to deal with this little gap in history where we need to deal with it. And talking about like films and things, I once thought about doing a sci-fi. Have you seen that mo- that zombie movie called The Girl with All the Gifts? No. Have you seen it? It's a brilliant movie. It's a brilliant movie. And this girl, she, there's a kind of pathogen, but what happens is she adjusts to it and it's almost like the next generation that comes along finds way to deal with it you know this generation that we've got we're kind of worried about kids and looking at all this stuff probably they're going to find a way to deal with it fingers crossed but it's just you know we like you said we're kids of the 80s and 90s we got our bodies aren't set up to it so we really do have to try and mitigate against it and if it means sleeping at the other end of the bed and turning off your wi-fi and putting your phone in airplane mode and we're and wearing silly glasses you know it's kind of all right that's that's not too bad for, for being able to, you know, contact people all over the world. And, it's, yeah. it's interesting when you look, you start doing the EMF research and say, go back in time, look at someone like Sam Millam, who was a fairly well-known epidemiologist and his cancer records when they rolled out um, just the power grid. You know, it's, it's that initial exposure to something the body has never seen before so we're going into the next phase of that which is the higher frequency phase which is the 5g phase so it's the same thing it's the same thing as you know when radar came out or when other layers of emf came out the body is just not it's it's too quick for our evolution or well, ad- adaptation responses it's gone way too quick you know that's that's if you cut if you cut everything out of what we said that's just the bottom line right and, and that's been sped up, like you said, the last yes. 20 yeah, years. we're just struggling to it's, adapt. It's just too yeah. quick to adapt. Yeah. I mean, and, and the, you know, adaption versus rehabilitation, our body likes to re- rehabilitate and it likes to heal. And obviously when you get older, that slows down too. Um, so it probably becomes even more important for us in our 50s and those in their 40s to give some, give some time to your body to heal from this. Well, that's the, like your redox redox capacity and you guys have probably spoken about redox like your cells ability to signal and repair you lose 10 percent of that every year that's just aging and non-native emf or unnatural emf is just it's a redox killer so it's definitely something when you think about any agent you go hey that's just a piece of the puzzle that i need to have some attention on um to get maximize what you're doing um and then those who are sick obviously need to do more you know yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's right. We're talking about maintenance versus, you know, someone who's trying to deal with a chronic issue. So, so Chris, leave us with your top recommendations, uh, because this is something that we're kind of earnestly trying to implement this season. Some of the recommendations I say I have started with these glasses, although I don't know whether they I need to get better quality ones. But yeah, like, I mean, the natural environment has to be brought in consideration. So if you if you're working indoors, you need to get out. Like you need to, like, I always, like, as I said, I'm, I'm lucky to be in Queensland. You know, it's it's sunny every day. I'm out in the sun and I'm doing a lot of that and that works. But if you're indoors, you just got to schedule time, you know, 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the noon, 10 minutes in the afternoon. That's what I tell all my clients, you know, protect your eyes, you know, when you're indoors, maybe invest in some better lighting if you're indoors for a lot a lot of time um and then blockers at night i mean and wi-fi off i mean when at night you know that, that's that's as simple as it gets for me um that's the main areas that you need to do if you have that's doable it's doable that's do i mean that 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 is manageable chris that you know it's manageable. Yeah, I'm not know what yeah. saying go and spend okay. like, come and i like this I, come, yeah come and get my five thousand dollar program and i'll tell you how to do it you know do your own research yeah. and it's not stupid. that comes next yeah it's not like super super expensive yeah i have a quick question are there ways to measure chris are there ways to measure how much emf you're actually being exposed to in your house like is there a way to like walk around with a you know geiger counter or something yeah there's a little there's a um and maybe you guys want to find it and put it in show notes there's a one that i can send you for when this goes out they're not very expensive a couple hundred dollars and you can actually test the microwave radiation, and it's also got different um, options on it to test for electrical field for wiring. 
and magnetic field coming from different devices. And it's a really good one because it's the little LED light panel on it. And it goes from the green and goes into yellow and goes into red. So it tells you when that where that exposure is for you. Um, and I, I go around and people, I have that with me all the time and it's a little sniffer and I, I shock people with it. <laughs> but you can do that and see what's... That's brilliant. Do you know, is it the Cornet one? Do you have the Cornet uh, one? I've Chris? just got a little, I think it's the Enviro something. It's only a small little... It's this uh, big, like it's like. You know, I've got you know, one. I've got a cornet one. Like you know, you can okay. you, if you like. Got big, yeah. Cornets are good. They're like this big, and then people walk around with big cones and things. I just like to keep something pretty discreet and go, "Hey, let's just look." You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't see at this dinner party. The EMF number here is ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> I, I want to do that, like going to exactly, a friend's house. Yeah. Like, I am out That's of here, you brilliant. guys. <laughs> you're in the red you're yeah. lighting up red well do you know i've got one and i do take it round to hotels and things but the reason why i was just looking in my drawer i was going to dramatically bring it out but actually oh. i've left it at the uh at the office because the device that i'm making i want them to make sure that whenever they make a change it always lights up green that's one of my um specifications for the device so i'm just realizing i've left it in uh i've left it in the netherlands but yes i I do use it. Yeah. Just to add, get like when you get these tools, you can become a little bit obsessive. I've actually wound it back. So I've got it with me, but when I'm anywhere, I don't go, I'm, I go, I'm not, I'm not even bringing it out. You know, unless I'm, it's someone's house to show them have asked me to do some measuring. It's just in your jacket, Chris, and you're just like, in my bag. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. Sneaky look. No, it's like, I'm like, I'm not bothering measuring because I know it's high. Like, what am I going to do about it? I know. And that's the, I mean, that, that is the hard part. You know, you're being exposed to it. Like, you know, I got radiation treatment for cancer when I was in my twenties. I know I exposed myself to a toxic amount of radiation, but I, I mean, I remember being in that room and everyone's walking in wearing masks. I got a, I got a gallium scan and in gallium scan. I mean, this is my favorite story of going through chemotherapy. After you finish chemo, they give you a gallium scan. It's nuclear medicine. They inject you with radioactive material. The woman's like wearing a hazmat suit. She pulls it out of a lead case. The syringe is in a lead case, and they're going to inject it in me. I'm like, wait, you're all covered up, and I'm going to get injected with gallium. But I, you know, but you know, the things you do, <laughs> you expose yourself. You, I couldn't do anything about it at that point. I'm going through cancer treatment, but you know, it, going through and being in the middle of an exposure to this, like, you know give yourself i guess give yourself some time to heal from that right and like turn everything off i don't know if you've <laughs> you've been in a dirty room uh you know get into a clean room for as long as you can i guess to rehab i don't know is that is that the oh, trick? Yeah, it's all about mitigating the damage I it's suppose. virtually virtually that, that's it so i've gone from like testing everything to the guy that's just fatigues you like i'm not gonna put myself in mental space where i'm always worried um and it's not a worry to me because I know that, you know, my sleeping space, is, there's no EMF. You know, I wake up with a clear head. Like I used to wake up, my head was fuzzy. Uh, and that shows you haven't been through the stages of detox and you've cleared everything. But now I wake up and my head is clear. My, I know I know the difference. And when you guys, like you guys do biohacks, when you start mucking around with it, you just feel these subtle changes. Um, even friends who didn't believe me. Um, so, oh, you know, I turned my phone off. You know, it was next to me, but I turned it off. And my brain felt different. Yeah, because you weren't like within a foot of your phone, like radiating you at night when you're trying to sleep. Now you have to change the world. <laughs> yep. But again, you're right because we're so No, simple, achievable, small steps. Yeah, yep. Sure. We have our guidelines too. We have our guidelines. We have our guidelines. Tell, tell Chris, tell people where they can find your course because we've been talking about that a lot and, and the website for all of the other products. So yeah, EMF's made simple. I'll give you guys a link um, to uh, you can put it in the show notes where people can register for that. I'm sure you guys will be interested in that. And I work with block blue light. Um, what I'd recommend is I'll give you my details and people can reach out to me. So I, I like to educate people on what they need to get. I don't just like people to jump on the internet and just start buying stuff or because it might not fit what they need so i like i do a free consultation with everyone who needs to look at like light therapy glasses lighting we even look at like lighting plans for people who are 
redoing their houses to make sure they don't get ripped off by the lighting companies and put all bad lighting in. It's generally they put way too many lights in your house and they just want to charge for all this lighting. So we do that. So I can like give you guys those links to go on the show notes. Is that cool? Does that work? Yeah, that's brilliant. Thank you, Chris. That's super cool. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, that's great. I mean, that's that's above and beyond because I think you're right. I mean, a lot of people do get confused with a lot of this stuff and there are a lot of websites out there where you can spend a lot of money and uh, you don't actually know whether you're getting the best bang for your buck. So that's super cool. Yeah. Well, I, I Chris, grateful again for the time. Grateful that we can, you know, start this process and uh, I, there's a lot of work I have to do here. I, I have a lot of things connected in my home. We have every smart home device known to man. So every room is mesh <laughs> networked and it's terrible. So I'm sure the device is going to explode in my hand when I bring it into the house. No, so I mean, like seeing the extra way. That's, that's what I'm saying. Like you always got wife and kids or whatever and, and like pulling them away from anything. But seeing is believing when you, you can have a look and see what levels it's pumping out. You go, okay, we might need to wind this back a little bit, give us a bit of space um, to, to achieve your goals, which, as you say, you've got a goal of reversing the aging. And, you know, it's it's important to test this stuff. You Maybe do it. Maybe season one, don't keep the Wi-Fi on. Season two, take it off. I don't know. There's even something to compare with. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Sarah and I are going to be living in, uh, we're going to be living as nomads in the middle of the uh, fields yeah. of Germany. Sarah's done that before, I think. So be... we'll actually get four seasons. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We'll go right. to well, the Himalayas or something. Well, thank we have you, Chris. A, we have our, it's we have really our lovely order. to see you. Yeah, it's great to, it's great to meet do. you, Chris. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks, guys. I hope it hasn't been too technical. Thank you so much, Chris. Cool. Thank you. I hope it hasn't been too technical. You know, I hope people can get something from it. No, I think I think that, you know, people can take from it what they like. It's, you know, the basic message is keep your sleeping environment clean and free of Wi-Fi and phones. I mean, I think that's simple enough. So uh, the, the technical piece is, is an extra bit to learn. And sometimes you have to hear it a few times. So thank you, Chris. Even if that's the first time people hear it, they can go and do yep. their own research. No worries. Thank Great. you. Appreciate it, guys. Really do. Okay. Right. Breaking the crack.